Have you ever been in a city where the sky is really gray and it's beautiful like Venice here and you want to take great photography but you can't because the sky is boring? Where in this video I'm going to show you how to take incredible black and white fine art quality that you can sell in galleries all over the world during boring daylight. Let's go! So let's talk about gear. I'm going to be using today my Sony A7R5 but any Sony camera, any camera I can work. I have a 24 105 f4 lens which i do 95 all my books with and i'm going to be using a little variable filter because i might want to do some low exposure it's really gray right now it's really ugly but i'm going to show you how to make really cool art also we're going to need a tripod because we might do some low exposure so very simple i do everything with this lens let's go all right so we're here on the academia bridge in venice one of the nicest view and the trick is, number one that I want to show you, is you got to underexpose your photo because you want to get that boring white sky to get all the details that the sky can have. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm at 100 ISO. I'm at like F8 to get everything sharp. And I'm going to be at a very fast speed, like in this case, one four hundredth of a second. I'm trying to get a dark sky. Let me show you. Now, the problem is that there's a lot of boats, so I'm going to have to wait for a moment where we only have one of this beautiful boat as a foreground element and a pretty clean photo. So you just have to be patient and get the perfect shot. And what you can do is you can zoom in and zoom out and see what you like the most. I kind of like zoomed out so we can see the whole view. I kind of like that. Okay, so now I'm going to try to make a loner exposure to make the water more flat. I don't like how the water is. So I'm going to take my tripod. For the tripod, I, I, I love this brand called Siriu because they are pretty cheap and I burn them like once a year. But I had this bowl head for like 12 years now. It's a really right style bowl head. I love it because there's a clamp, which is kind of really cool. You can go really fast and you don't have this sort of screw, which I really hate. So this is Sony 7R5. You don't have to have such a fancy camera. So why do I put on a tripod? It's because I'm gonna use a filter. I only have on me this variable Tiffin filter, which I'm gonna screw. And I just wanna get like maybe a two second exposure with something like this. So let me show you. I'm gonna go at F22 like this. And then I'm gonna go at ISO 50 to have the lowest ISO possible. And then I'm gonna go very slow the other way. Slow, 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 slow. So you see I'm at like 2.5 seconds, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna play with a filter. You can see, you don't wanna to go too much with a, because you don't, you don't wanna get the cross. Just like this is kind of good enough. Maybe a little less. I don't necessarily need eight seconds, but eight seconds is pretty good. So like maybe five seconds, make sure I'm very straight. Voila. That's kind of cool. And then here, I'm gonna to go to two second timer, so I'm not touching my camera. I think I'm gonna go a little short, it's too bright. So I'm gonna to go to 3.2 seconds, take a shot and see what happens. Okay, so let's see the photo now. Yeah, you see you've got all the motion from the boat. Make sure you, you double click on it and make sure it's very straight, very sharp, I mean. Okay, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I'm gonna make a little shorter exposure, like 2.5 seconds, okay. And I want, to, I want to wait for the boat to come on so I get the motion of the book. Like, oh, we have a beautiful book coming on. Let's wait for it. Let's wait for it. Are you ready? Are you steady? Let's go. One and two seconds. Boom. The boat comes in, makes a little line. I have long exposure and noise reduction on. Let's check out the photo. Look at that. We get a beautiful motion. I love it. Now I'm going to find another cool framing. And I have an idea of going under the bridge to make like a frame in a frame. I don't know if it's going to work. Let's go and check it out. All right, so now we are literally on the Vaporete station. It's moving a little bit, so we have to be careful. And I'm doing a frame in the frame with the Academia Bridge. So check out my settings, come closer. So you see, I'm still at, I'm still at 50 ISO, F22 and two seconds. But because it's moving, I'm gonna have to wait that the boats are passing, are not passing, so I get a sharp photo. I actually did a test shot, look at that. We get the frame of the boat and just double click on the photo, make sure it's sharp. This one is a bit blurry because I guess we moved a bit. So I'm just gonna stay here until I get the perfect shot. I can zoom in, zoom out, but I like to get that bridge. It just makes a nice natural frame. So let's try that. Let's try taking a few photos. Oh, 
Okay, so now I'm on the Vaporator. It's actually a moving floor, so I cannot do lawn exposure. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna open my filter all the way. If you move a variable filter, it's not anymore a filter. And I'm gonna go like ISO 100. F9. And like I want a pretty fast speed, like 1 50th of a second. And I'm just gonna wait for a nice boat and I'm gonna get that frame in the frame photo, which I really like. And it's gonna be super interesting. It's just a different way. When you use natural frames, it's always very interesting because it gives like an anchor point from where you shot the photo. So this one is not a long exposure. I just have to wait for the right foreground because foreground is everything. And because, I, because I'm on a moving platform, I don't need the tripod but I do need to underexpose the photo so that we get a nice black and white. So right now I'm at 100 ISO F9. I'm always shooting at 100 ISO and I'm at 180 of a second. I'm actually, actually gonna even go even faster, like 125. Here comes the Vaporator. I'm gonna wait for the boat to pass and get the shot. Okay, so I had to wait quite a bit and I ended up like shooting at one two hundred of a second to really get a dark photo, but I got the perfect boat passing by, which is what I wanted. So now I'm gonna show you a little confidential street in Venice where we get an amazing view. Let's go. So welcome to this confidential view of the beautiful church here, which I totally forgot the name. If you know the name, leave me the comments in the video. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I wanna try to take a very clean photo and I've already done it. I found like a really clean panorama of this. So I did a very nice panel there because I tried to get a photo here and I was very low like this and it didn't work. It was really ugly. So I took a photo here, but it's, it's really ugly, it doesn't work. So what works for me is, is to take a really clean pano like this, where you see the whole canal. And then earlier, right now I cannot because there's a boat, earlier I went, I went over there and I, I shot a photo of the church that you can see behind me and just with one gondola. There is some other ones I'm gonna to have to erase in Photoshop, but it's cool. So let's go to Lightroom and let's retouch this. All right, so let's retouch our boring weather photos. So I made a bit of a selection of photos that I wanna show you. So, you know, I started off with this beautiful view of the Academy Bridge, but I was at a very fast setting at 1 400th of a second. I was like really freezing the boats. And why not re remember that I'm like underexposing the photos so that I can see the sky. But you know what? At the end of the day, I prefer the one that are, you know, with a long exposure like this one. Uh, this is like a 3.2 second. I don't know. I just love the, 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 the way the water looks. It's got a different feel to it. So how do you make this weather photo really interesting? Well, I'll show you a, a few step process. Step number one, we're gonna make it like very moody and colorful, and then we're gonna do another one in black and white. I'm gonna apply my natural drama formula, which is based on my Lightroom, which you can get for free if you pay shipping and handling. The link is down below. I'm gonna open the shadows, then I'm gonna do my black points. I'm holding on the option key to make sure what you see here in black is 100% black. And then I'm gonna do my white point, which is gonna really reveal the photo. Now, to make this photo interesting, I think I want to give it a really strong color cast. And that's my step number two of the natural drama formula, which is I'm going to add a, quite some blue to it, maybe a little bit of magenta, just to give it like a, a feel to it, I think. And I'm going to add a lot of contrast and I'm going to make it much darker because I want to get that moody feeling. Maybe let's boost the white a little bit. Okay, we have some issue here with the ND filter, but that's fine. We're going to correct that. So... Step number three of the natural drama formula is to refine colors. So what I can do on this one is you can go to U, Saturation, and Luminance. I'm going to take U, and I'm going to click here on this little tool, 
I'm gonna click on the blue. If I go up, it becomes very purple. If I go down, it becomes very green. So maybe I'm just gonna put it a little towards the green, not so much. One thing I do want to do on this one is I want to go to saturation and I want to boost the red very much, like the red, the orange, and the yellow, so that the buildings come out very strong. I'm just trying to make it more interesting, okay? And then on this one, on luminance, I'm going to take the same tool here, and I'm going to click on, on the sky here, and I'm going to make it a bit darker, okay? Because you really want to have a bit of drama. Ooh, I'm starting to like this. Okay, I think I'm going to add even more contrast to this one. And um, now the sky is becoming a little too blue. So you know what? I'm just going to correct a little bit the white balance. Okay, now let's go and crop this photo because I want to zoom in a little more. I think I want to go 16 by 9 on this one. So 16 by 9. My mistake, I should go first to the transform section and click on auto. Boom. Then I can crop. I'm going to go on crop and I'm going to go to 16 by 9. And I think I want to have like a little more of water and a little less of sky, maybe zoom in a little bit. And you will see it's going to make it's going to make that I really am zooming a lot more in the photo. And that gives me a little base. Maybe I'm going to add a bit of clarity on this one because I really want to have it dramatic. And I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and I'm going to do some dodge and burn to really make it pop. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to add a linear gradient for the very top of, for the very top of the sky. And check this out. I'm going to lower the exposure a lot. But the problem by doing that, it's lowering the exposure here on this, on, on this building. I don't want this. So there's a little trick is you can go to your mask to make sure that window is open. If not, open it here. That little window can be closed. You can open it. And then you click on the three dots and click intercept mask with sky. By doing that, boom, it's going to make this brighter. Basically, now the mask only affect the sky, which is really cool. And then on this one, I want to go and I want to make the corners a little, especially this corner, a bit darker because I want to focus the eyes inside of the photo. So I'm going to go linear gradient. I'm going to add a gradient here and that corner and make it a bit darker because I want people to focus there. But that's not all. That's not all. Now we need to focus the eyes of the tiger. We need to focus the person inside of the photo. So we go here and we add a gradient and I'm going to show you a little trick that also works as a gradient with this new mask feature. So I'm going to open a lot of the, the light and check this out. It's already amazing. It's really focusing the eyes inside of the photo. I'm thinking about it here, but I only want this on the sky. So check this out. Same trick, three dots, intersect mask with sky. Check this out. Are you ready? One, two, three. And boom. Now this circle here is only affecting the sky. Check it. Wherever I put it, it's only affecting the sky. Isn't that crazy? That's the new masking feature there. And that's not all, because I really want to go even more dramatic. You know, I want to make the best out of this black weather, this bad weather. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to take a brush. And remember, I show this in some of my videos, but you want to make sure that auto mask is off. And you want to make sure that feather is at 100%, because if it's not, check this out. Let's say I want to add a bit of exposure. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to brush. If the feather is not 100%, it's, that's how it's going to look. Not very natural. Now, if I bring the feather all the way to 100%, and I do that again, boom, 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 it's already going to look better. But it's still not quite there. It's still, like, too obvious. But if I bring the flow and density low, so feather 100%, flow and density a bit low, check it out. Now it's much more subtle. And if I lower my exposure, it really is more subtle. So I'm going to erase this one. Uh, I'm just going to delete that mask here. I'm going to press delete. And let's do it one more time. I'm going to add a little brush. This time, feather 100%, flowing density in the 70s. Just the year like I was born. And now, uh, we add a bit of exposure. And I want to just paint here just to do some sort of leading line here. Check it out. It's very subtle before and after, but it's leading you into this photo. And now... I just want to clean up here. Uh, there's a big sensor dust here, and that probably came from my filter, but that should take care of it. Make sure you're using the new feature here. Yeah, it's not completely gone, so you can do it a second time. And uh, I want to make sure it's completely gone. Yeah, okay, now it's completely gone. And I love this photo. Uh, this is the final result, and this is the before, and this is the after. And that's how you can make bad weather photo 
look really stunning and you know just go out there even when it rains and use lawn exposure and do certain things okay i want to show you another example um i want to show you another example which is this one under the bridge but this one i'm gonna i'm gonna make it black and white so i'm gonna go to black and white and you see it's very grayed out okay and then i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna open the shadows bring down the highlights i'm gonna do my black point and i'm gonna do my white point okay and then add a bit of contrast add a bit of exposure and already i love the fact that i got this you know to be um you know what actually this is not the right photo let's take a photo where that's more interesting let's take a photo where there's like a boat passing or something i think i had one of them where the yeah this one the boat was passing let's try this one so let's go black and white open the shadows bring down the highlights do the white do the black add a bit of contrast and ooh, I love it. But now the sky is way too bright. So let's do some. On this one, I only do exposure. Let's do a little bit of white balance. Ooh, look at what balance what it's doing to the sky. Let's lower a little bit the sky so it's a bit darker. That's perfect. And now I actually want to make a gradient here on the sky. So let's go here and let's add a gradient to the sky. But again, I only want it to affect the sky. So I'm making this a bit darker. I'm opening up this window. And boom, intersect mask with select sky. And now you see the gradient is only affecting the sky. This is so cool. I only want it to affect the very, very top here. Yeah, amazing. So now let's do another one for the bottom. Uh, yeah, let's go to linear gradient. I really want to make a gradient here. And let's lower this. Same idea, we want to focus the eyes instead of the photo. So let's add now a gradient. Again, I want the gradient only to be on the sky. So now you know this. So you see right now it's affecting the sky in the building. We don't want this. I love this new feature of Lightroom. Intersect mask with sky. And boom, now my gradient is only affecting. This is crazy. This is something we couldn't do before. It would take a lot of masking on. It's all automatic. It's getting crazy, guys. Brush. Okay, let's, let's brush some leading lines. So same thing here. Same idea, but this one, I'm just going to make this a bit more shiny. And this a bit more shiny. And voila. Let's see here. Let's go like that. Put it in full screen. Okay, Basla should be before and after. Before and after. And last but not least, I don't know if you remember, but I did a pano at the end. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to select all of that. I'm going to right click and go to Photo Merge Panorama. And let's see what perspective is. You Look at the horizon. If I s choose cylindrical, the horizon is actually pretty cool. I'm always visiting between, uh, let's see what spherical is going to give me. I think I'm going to go with perspective. I think perspective is going to make the buildings a little better. Yeah, I think perspective is going to be better. So I'm going to choose perspective. And, on the, uh, and I already have done it and it's here. And now I'm ready to turn this into, I want to do like a moody photo again. So... Open the shadows, bring down the highlights. I'm not going to do black and white this one. Uh, I'm going to crush the blacks, like really crush the blacks, something like this. You want a lot of blacks for this. I'm going to crush the whites. And then I'm going to add a lot of contrast. So the colors are really coming up strong here. So what I'm going to do now, and um, of course I got to take care, I'm gonna, I got to recrop the photo. But first, every time before you recrop, you absolutely got to go to auto to make this a bit more straight. Okay, I think I'm gonna play around with vertical on this one. And you see, when I play around with vertical, that wall is straight, but this is not straight. So what you gotta do is, before you do the vertical, you gotta rotate a little bit. You gotta rotate so that this building, this inclination here is the same than here. So I'm just gonna move this like that. You see now the it, this one is sliding going like this, and so it's sliding going like this. And now I can go to vertical to make it straight. Ooh, I like that. Then I can go and crop it 16 by 9, which is what I usually print my photo at. This one is going to be really good. And you see, when you crop a photo, you got to make sure you, you use something called police border. You go around the photo and make sure you don't take something that's half in and half out. So I want to crop all of that and be at the limit here. Yeah, I kind of like that. Perfect. 
and then press enter and boom, you discover the photo. And now that we've done the exposure, let's tackle the white balance. I think the photo is a little too blue. So maybe we add a little bit, little bit of, uh, let's, let's go to daylight, see what daylight is going to give me. Yeah, I kind of like daylight. Let's just go to the light. But now comes the magic step, which is I'm going to go to saturation and I'm going to saturate all the reds big time. I want the reds to come out and maybe I'm going to take the blue and the aqua down. So I'm really getting the reds to come up. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I'm going to add a bit of clarity because I'm going for a bit of a, you know, a dramatic look. And now we really have to take care of the sky because what's happening is that my eyes is going toward the sky and I want, I want my eyes to stay here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to take a gradient, big gradient, lower this. You know, we, you've seen me do this a few times. And now three dots into the mask with sky so that it only affects the sky. And boom, check this out before, after. It, it's only really affecting the sky now. Uh, it's actually not strong enough. So, oh, it's really only affecting this part of the sky, which is kind of weird. Oh, I see why, because the mask didn't work. So you know what, when that happens, I'm gonna delete this mask here and I'm gonna do it with a brush. So you take a big brush and then use, lower the exposure on this one and just brush here. And when you come close to the buildings, what you can do is you can just brush over the buildings here and then you, you hold on the option key, okay? And you make it big. So I'm holding, the, you see, it becomes a minus. And then I use the auto mask feature. And with the auto mask, I can rewrite just the buildings. And, uh, and now, yeah, I want to really make this a bit darker. I think I, mean, I need to make the overall photo a bit darker. To be honest, it's a little too bright to me. Okay, drama is what we're looking for. I think on this one, I want to add even more contrast and take out some of the saturation to give it this sort of dramatic look. Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Maybe the black not so, not so low. And my sky is still way too bright. So let's try something. Let's try to go just selecting the sky and let's see if we can, if it does a good job at selecting to the sky. See, it's not, and it's not really doing a good job. You see, Lightroom has a bug. It doesn't see the clouds as being the sky, which is fine. So I'm just going to brush even more. I'm just going to brush and brush and brush until I get the result I want. So I'm just going to brush here. I, I really want this guy to be much darker just on the very top. Okay, it's maybe a bit too much. So let's back it down. And then let's let me move this somewhere else. Okay, I'm going to move this here. And then I'm going to use the option key to erase this and this okay and i don't know there's something i don't like about this photo so i'm just i think the, the blacks are too let's see what the blacks is like yeah i think the blacks were too strong on this one and maybe lower make it a bit darker maybe let's go back to so a bit of a more blue feeling yeah and let's you know it's just sort of a, i want a very dramatic look i kind of like that so Okay, so th let's see, this This is the before, and this is the after. Kind of cool, I think the one I really like the most on this one is, I love that black and white here. Yeah, I love the black and white here, this one. I think this one is my favorite. This one is my favorite. Okay guys, make sure you get my book, Lightroom Natural Drama, and you can get two weeks coaching from me and some of my best course where I can get your photography. If you wanna become a world-class photographer, I can really help. Check out the link is under the video. I'll see you in another video. My name is Monsieur. Au revoir.